Quadri Olsen. Quadri okay. Olsen. Hey! Okay. Excited you know, about that. Do you think Tony Gonzalez makes an appearance at oh, that game? Oh, I think he will. I think those Falcons fans will be greeting him. You know, it's funny. It's like you know, the last day of something. You're supposed to feel melancholy. This is the last day before we have football back in our lives, and I have no problems, no melancholy, <laughs> no sadness. Football's here tonight. No. Now I hook it to my veins. And yeah. The question is, is Kyle Brandt ready for highlights? I think, oh, are you a little rusty? Highlights. Yeah, no, I've been cross-training. I'm a <laughs> pescatarian, only fish for highlights. I am ready for these Broncos Falcons highlights. Tom Benson, this game tonight. I will take this over. Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals, the World Series, WrestleMania. I would pay for it. Put it on pay-per-view and I'll pay for it. I am so ready, guys. <laughs> football! Bam! This is Good Morning Football! Bam! Bam! Right here in New York City, August 1st, our three-year yeah. show anniversary. That's wow. right. We are entering the fourth season. Nate Burles and Peter Schrager, Kyle Brandt, my name's Kay Adams, and this is the lead block. This is lead the lead block. Lead block. The lead block. Lead Let's block. go live to Canton, Ohio, the NFL celebrating its 100th year, and we, of course, have enshrinement activities going on all week long. Let's talk about the Broncos, though, and their veteran linebacker. This is Von Miller's first trip to Canton, so hopefully it won't be his last, as we all think he could be in a gold jacket someday. What can you tell us about how he's approaching his visit to the Hall of Fame? I keep seeing on Instagram, all the players being really excited to walk down those hallowed halls. No, no question. And Vaughn was definitely excited about it. He had never been here before. And when he got a chance to walk in and see those busts, he said his, his heart almost dropped to the floor. What he told me is that, look, he said, when you see Mike Munchak, when you see Derek Thomas, when you see Bruce Smith, John Elway, those are the legends of the game. And so to be in those halls and every player aspires to get here to Canton, to the Hall of Fame, to be there for the first time, to see those images, he said it was special. And he said every player wants to be here, and obviously one day he would like to be here, but it takes a lot of hard work, okay? Hey, Jim, as a San Diegan, I know you are classically trained in tight ends. Winslow Sr., <laughs> all the way through to Gates, of course. But Tony Gonzalez was really, yes. really special. How did he make his mark on the game? Look, there's no question he's the all-time leader in receptions for tight ends, number two overall among receivers. But what's interesting, Kyle, is that we often think of these guys as finished products when they get here to the Hall of Fame and that they were that way their entire career. If you go back to Tony's rookie season, he was anything but a finished product. In fact, he was known for having inconsistent hands there. And, you know, it's been a long time since his rookie season, so I texted Rich Gannon last night. I said, do I remember this accurately? I know Tony's Mr. Reliable at the end of his career, but that first year, were there in, uh, uh, inconsistent hands? And he said, that is accurate. But what Tony did is he willed and worked himself to be the greatest pass-catching tight end in the history of this game. So again, while we think of these guys as finished products, they put in a lot of work to get to where they are today. And remember, as a rookie, he didn't even start a game. And I know you have great knowledge of this game, and I'll challenge you on this with this NFL trivia. Can you name the two tight ends who started those 16 games in Tony's rookie year? Ooh. I certainly cannot. Harry Cash? Harry Ca Cash, one That's of them? Who we got, Jim? Mr. Dunk Cash? on us, Trotter. What do you got? We, we, <laughs> we got Ted Popson with 12 games, and then we got Derek Walker. So those are the two guys who started oh. ahead of Tony Gonzalez in Tony's rookie year. <laughs> Hall of Fame trivia with the best, Trotter Jim. live <laughs> in Canton, Ohio, the enshrinement festivities. And that's right, they've been through a lot, faced adversity, worked really hard to get better. I'm fully prepared to be inspired all weekend long watching NFL Network as Can't we wait. welcome a new class into the Hall of Fame. No uh, let's talk about Tony Gonzalez a little bit more in something we like to call the, 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 the Roto. Thursday. Nice, Kay. Thank you. Speaking of Tony G, he is headed to the Hall of Fame, of course, this weekend, and I feel like he'll be on one sideline with his squad, and on the other one will be Champ Bailey with the Broncos, the legendary cornerback. Both incredible careers. I want to know which Hall of Fame had the most impressive career, though, all in all. Ooh. I'm going to start with you. Tony Gonzalez or Champ Bailey? Out of the gates here. I, I've worked with both of these guys. Champ Bailey was with Fox with me for a bit, and then now Tony Gonzalez is my colleague there. And so personal opinions will be on the aside. Always right. with you. I'm going with Tony Gonzalez because okay. I look at the position. There have been so many great cornerbacks in this league, and I can't with definitive statement say that Champ Bailey was the best cornerback of all time because Dion's alive, and there's Daryl Green, and there's all these guys. 
Tony Gonzalez with Gronk in the conversation and maybe some others is the greatest tight end living and to ever play football. You look at the numbers. He leads all tight ends and catches. He's 173 ahead of the next guy. And when it goes to yards, he is over 2,500 yards more than number two on the all-time tight end list. Jason Witten when it comes to yards. Tony Gonzalez is the tight end of not only his generation, but of an entire era. Champ Bailey is an all-time legend. I can't say with a definitive nature he's any better than Deion Sanders or some of the greats before him that have come after. One vote for Tony G. It's a good take. Champ is just so cool. I mean, so cool. I remember when he came out of Georgia, I'm like, dude's name is Champ. All the fame for And I'm going to understand he has a brother named Boss. <laughs> like, this is the coolest family ever. Um, but Tony was a maniac. You know, we're talking about Gronk. Like, it's fun to play the what-if game. Let's just say if Tony Gonzalez played his entire career with Tom Brady yeah. instead of stops with people like Brody Croy and when that didn't work out, you can imagine his numbers then. I also have a very specific memory from Hard Knocks. When the Hard Knocks went to the Chiefs, and Dwayne Bowe was a rookie on the Chiefs, wide receiver, and afterwards, Tony was getting routes in. He's getting routes in, and Dwayne Bowe was walking off the field. And he calls him out. says, you're not going to get extra work. Okay, well, you know, because you've been there, so you know. You do your thing. And I was like, damn, Tony got cold. Yeah. It's Tony, and it's not even close. I, I love champ. Tony Gonzalez is a legend. Yeah, I I'm going to say Tony from a production standpoint. Um, there was nobody better. He was uh, the ultimate champ. Like, big fundamental. He was the NFL's version of Tim Duncan. Uh -huh. He did it the right way on and off the field and was dominant all the way through. He dunked, too. But, yeah, and he dunked as well. Uh, but I I'm going to say champ on a personal level, though, because I'll take you back to 2006. Seattle Seahawks versus the Denver Broncos. It's freezing. The score is 20 to 20. It's the fourth quarter. Less than two minutes left. And it's third down. Matt Hasselbeck calls deep curl routes. Third and four. And I go out. I leave the line of scrimmage. And I'm thinking in my head, please, please don't be Champ Bailey. Please don't be Champ Bailey. Let me get a young player. Let me get a young player. Yeah. I look up and it's Champ Bailey. He is. Yeah. Breathing right on top of me. And I can see the air coming out of his helmet. My heart is racing. I'm thinking to myself, I know Matt wants to throw me this ball. And I'm hauling. I run 16 yards. And I'm thinking, please, just get out your break because he's so fast and he was so patient he can backpedal as fast as you could run mm. and he was taller than you so if he was near you he was either going to pick it off or bat the ball away and I got to my last step and I pushed and I looked up and he opened up just a little bit and thought I was going to go deep I turned around mm -mm. Matt had the ball in the air dropped in my stomach and we went on to kick a field goal with Josh Brown win the game 23 to 20. it's a very insignificant play in the grand scheme of my career but it's a play that I always remember because Champ Bailey was such a legend. And I remember walking into the locker room. I didn't kick the game winning field goal. I didn't have a big game statistically, but it was one of my favorite games ever because I thought I caught a ball on Champ Bailey. Wow. One of the most versatile corners in the game. I do feel like we have a lot of guests that come on our show, future Hall of Famers, Hall of Famers who yeah. bring up Champ Bailey as that dude. They do no, not they want any of that smoke from Champ Bailey in their career. Yeah. 100%. My, personally, my favorite moment, I can button it with this. I remember one time Tony was so good on Kansas City. They were playing Denver, and Denver put Champ Bailey on Tony Gonzalez in a three-point stance. Yeah. He was guarding him then because no one could stop Tony. The two came together. So cool. If we, if we, last Come one, on, we have so much. I just, if we're doing it. We're going to do it. Go Let's talk. It. I mean, the fact that he was traded head, heads up for Clinton Portis. Clinton Portis, yeah is maybe the greatest football trade of all time. You don't see names like that one yeah. for one. Yeah. Clinton Portis for Champ Bailey at the Straight prime up. of their careers. It was a different time in football, but that is one of the coolest little pieces of his career, too. Yeah, you guys are a little extra excited today. Yeah. Yeah. football tonight. Yeah. Broncos, Falcons squaring off at 8 p.m. Eastern. We'll have highlights for you tomorrow on Good Morning Football. So let's talk about these squads currently. Quarterbacks Joe Flacco and Matt Ryan are who I want to square up for round two. I mean, Ryan, MVP in 2016. We know Flacco was a Super Bowl MVP in Super Bowl 47. Ups, downs, bit of a roller coaster since then. So I ask you, who's more likely to return to MVP form? Flacco or Ryan? Well, Foxworthy for sure. Um, but uh, it, it, Matt we'll Ryan. We'll get to that. Oh, I can't wait. Matt Ryan. If, if Matt Ryan is not thickly in the MVP conversation this year, there's something wrong. Something went wrong because the roster is too good. I like Joe Flacco, but um, he was a Super Bowl MVP. It's much different being a season-long MVP. And... I'm not sure Joe Flacco's going to finish the season with the Broncos either, so I'm going to go Matt Ryan and run away. I think Flacco will re-earn everybody's respect for how he comes so. back and plays this year, but it's Matt Ryan. I agree with you 100%. You have the running back there. Devontae Freeman is going to come back strong, and that trio of wide receivers, Julio Jones, Mama Sanu, and Calvin Ridley, he should be in the MVP conversation. Okay, it's Matt Ryan. There's yeah. no excuse. This is it. I look at him in a Flacco. You can make a lot of excuses. New team, new coach, new coordinator, new young guy. 
It's all there. It's all built for Matt Ryan this year. No excuses. This table has high expectations for the no squad yeah. this season. Let's round things out now with a pop culture battle. What's, what's so funny, Kyle? I, I'm just happy. I love this segment. <laughs> okay. I love it. We have tonight's Hall of Fame game teams representing a guy from Atlanta and a guy from uh, Denver. For ATL, it's blue-collar comedian himself, Jeff Foxworthy, mm-hmm. obviously. And in the other corner is Tool Time Taylor. The Binford 5000, Tim Allen, born in Denver. These are two hilarious gentlemen. Look at Tim This was a, like, 90s sitcom (laughs) scene that I was so here for Mm -hmm. on every level. So who is the better 90s comedian, Kyle Foxworthy or the Santa Claus? Is that Tim Allen or? (laughs) It's just a stock image of a man with a microphone. (laughs) It's like William Shatner. (laughs) What do you guys think? I don't know. I have to think about this. I'm going to go with Tim Allen. And, you know, I'll let you guys get to the classic show, but I'll just go based on movies. I mean, Tim Allen, come on. Toy Story? You know, Toy Story? Hello? Santa Claus? Santa we're not Claus going, we're not just going to infinity, Nate. We're going to infinity and, and beyond. beyond. You know, not, we're not going to mention Galaxy Quest and Shaggy Dog. That was when Galaxy he was trying to make plays. some money. Like Galaxy Quest Galaxy yeah. Quest plays, dude. Dude. Cranks, I'm just saying he has some legendary films. Tim Allen, uh, beloved. Jeff Foxworthy, beloved. But no one uh, was the subject of more... Uh, I guess, what would you call those books in the toilet, uh, in the bathroom? A bathroom book where it's just one-liners? Uh-huh. Jeff Foxworthy. I mean, oh. The whole thing, you know if you're a redneck. Yeah. Kyle, I have a feeling you have some of those up your sleeve. I haven't even talked about it, but I imagine you're going to go Foxworthy and you might have some jokes for us. Maybe not. If you've been married three <laughs> times and still have the same in-laws, you might be a redneck. If your working TV is on top of your non-working TV, you might be a redneck. If you ever use a toilet brush as a back scratcher, you might be a redneck. And it goes on it and on. on. The it dumbest on. jokes. Selling out amphitheaters across the country. I love Buzz Lightyear. I love the Galactic Alliance and all they represent against the evil emperor Zerg. However, I'm going to go with the fox. Yeah. That's what the fox says, you might be a redneck. That's what he says. We're not talking home improvement? In 20 <laughs> 19, he's still relevant today, Jeff yes. Foxworthy. He's judging on he's a on that show. show. Oh, is that, what is it? Chrissy Teigen. It's called Bring the Funny. Oh, I'm my gosh. The same network you can see the Hall of Fame game on. Oh, that's incredible. See so how right. connected to Foxworthy. Synergy, Andy. Adams. Guys, yeah. home improvement over everything. You guys that's are absolutely yeah. insane. Jo- Jonathan Taylor Thomas. That's what I'm saying. I'll show up for Zachary Dealing Ty Bryant. Bryant. I'll show up for I, him. Yeah, I love <laughs> that show. JTT. I love the writing. Jill Taylor was like the coolest mom on earth, and she was like a I, not having it wife. <laughs> I love that. And then JTT yeah. shows up, and he's Simba, too. I, 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 I think Nate just did a Wilson impression. Wow. Yeah, that was Wilson. We're really going deep. He would just talk about his feelings. and That's it. Just the fence. Yeah. That was Heidi, like his therapist. Bring me something. Who's a better Wilson, that guy or the volleyball? There's your throwdown. Or the quarterback. They're all good. <laughs> Shout out to Wayne the showrunner. Or Russell. Speaking Russell. of quarterbacks, Shout out the, to the Bills showrunner quarterback Russell. will be joining us by Training Camp Live. We have nine hours of coverage here as we have camp to camp. We will go live. But we already talked to Sean McDermott this morning, and yeah. Bills Mafia is out in full force to try to take out the Patriots. And... We visited with Chicago on ITC Live as well. Khalil Mack saying that they are in win-now mode. Are they actually running out of time, though? This window's pretty small, huh? Running out of time. A lot of windows.